Thank you. Um, sorry, just to say um, that we're going to record this for our YouTube channel for the Dominican House of Prayer um, and as an extension of Heartreach. So, yeah, just to say if you um, that it is being recorded and if you don't want to be on, you can turn your camera off. But if you can keep your cameras on, great. <laughs> okay. So, so, Lord, we ask you to really open our hearts with the gifts of wisdom and understanding, and all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and enlighten our minds and our soul to intercede for us, our Blessed Mother, through your powerful prayer in heaven, that we may receive something of the, the gospel message today in a whole new way, a fresh way that will give us the zeal and the drive to live our lives more fervently that we will not settle for anything less than to become mystics in the heart of the church, your call upon our life. So we ask you, Lord, as well, to put a fire into our hearts, a fire to, to cling to you, to seek the infinite riches of your heart. By your Holy Spirit to draw us into the mystery of the Father, to discover that we are truly children children of God, and to discover his infinite love, the source of our conviction to choose the good and to choose truth and justice and all the virtues. And so may the Lord bless us now and prepare us to receive the great tradition of our church that we will become more fervent and more committed and that we will have more knowledge to infuse our hearts to love. Amen. Just put that. Great. So, so the name of this title is called Inner Fire, the, the Freedom of the Mystics. Um, and I guess it's just like reading recently some of the lives of the saints, as, always, as I always try to. Um, you know, there seems to be something burning in their hearts. And please God, that's happening in all our hearts. You know, the Christians burn with fire. Uh, the fire of the Holy Spirit, um, even when we might go through a period of dryness where we feel nothing or we have no consolations, the thirst that is left in us is still that fire, um, that, 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 that desire for more of God, that, that desire even to experience God more it is in, in itself a wonderful sign. So if you find yourself in this talk, you don't feel necessarily caught on fire with your emotions and feelings. Um, but you'll find yourself longing for God, that you find yourself still longing to, Lord, where are you? I don't feel you, I don't experience you, but I'm longing for you. That is still the fire of the Holy Spirit. That's grace. You cannot long for God, okay? You cannot long for God unless the Holy Spirit is alive in you, okay? So, so we want to, you know, just to begin this talk, the whole question around this talk, the whole question of freedom. But before that, I want to just read something. And it's from Father Ignatius, who um, is another Dominican friar. Some of you know him. Um, and uh, we've kind of been doing a lot of work together, bringing about trying to discern from the Lord uh, this work about the Dominican House of Prayer, which is at the moment a YouTube channel. Um, and, and he does something called Upper Garden, which is a website um, uh, that, that you can look at his stuff. It's called uppergarden.org. And on it, he has essays and about the mystics and the life, the tradition of the church on prayer, etc. And both of us have this call um, that we feel really passionate about from our own experience of reading the great tradition of the church on prayer and, and the mystical life um, to, to, to really communicate this. Um, because from my own experience, I'm sure it's yours, that knowledge breeds love. The more we know of this rich tradition in our church on prayer, on, on the truth, on, on, on the gospel, it, it, it burns in us. It, it's supposed to catch us on fire. It's supposed to draw us more deeply into the mystery of God. And, and you know, sometimes little concepts block us from entering into deep union with God. That sometimes we have like little wonky ideas that need to be burned or purified by, by solid doctrine, by solid teaching, by the word of God, purified by the spirit. And that purifies our mind, our intellect, which then allows us to see God in, in the spirit more clearly and to see God's ways and to understand his ways and all this. 
adds that inner fire. And all of this leads to freedom, interior freedom. We're going to look at that whole notion of freedom. But just to begin with, so Father Ignatius on his website has something that really always struck me, and it's from the Catechism. I'm just going to read it out. And it's about what the Catechism says about the mystical life. And it says, spiritual progress tends toward ever more intimate union with Christ. This union is called mystical because it participates in the mystery of Christ through the sacraments, which we also call the holy mysteries. And in him, in the mystery of the Holy Trinity. So the whole mystical life is about participating, we know, in Jesus, which happened at baptism. Okay, baptism invited us into the very heart of Christ, joined us spiritually into Christ, unites us to Christ, and creates this whole new reality, which you hear me preaching about on Heart Week, which we call the church, which is the spiritual organism, the mystical body of Christ. And, and when we're united to Christ, by spiritually, supernaturally, really one with him, he introduces us, you could say, by the power of the Holy Spirit to the Father and, and, and into the whole life of the Trinity, the fullness of God, the fullness of life is the Trinity. It's not, it's not dividing any of the persons in God, but together. And this is a great revelation, right, that Jesus brought us, that this was the revelation waiting before all time for God to reveal, that God, in fact, was... Uh, was a personal love, a family of love, a trinity of love. And, and Jesus revealed this. And Jesus had the authority to speak because he was God himself. He's part of this inner life that was happening for all eternity before creation. And so, so, so we can forget that about our faith sometimes that the faith of our faith is Trinitarian. It's focused on Christ insofar that Christ will bring us to the Father and reveal to us the power of that love that they share which is the Holy Spirit, okay? So that's the fullness of our faith. I remember being once in um, Madrid with, um, with, on a tour with the Dominican brothers. A couple of years ago was the anniversary, the 800th anniversary of the order founded by St. Dominic. And, and on that tour, we were brought into this cathedral and it was like this room with loads of icons and artifacts and there was a part there where there was all this Trinitarian art. And, and, and the, the guide was explaining to us at one point in, in Spanish history, there was this heresy trying to almost like forget about the Trinitarian aspect of our faith, that our faith is, 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 is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that, that, that this mystery of God is at the heart of all the other mysteries of our faith. All the other truths of our faith flow out of this fundamental truth that God is love. And if God is love, then God is three as saint augustine would say because god is um you have the source of love which we call the father then who is loved is love is always of something in this case it's someone so the son and then what they the love itself is a third aspect which is the holy spirit right so the, this communion of love and this fundamental mystery is at the heart of our faith and it's at the heart of our freedom of our inner freedom and we're going to see what i mean by that later on but Freedom is really being caught up in this life, in, in this exchange of love, a, a really incredible love. So, okay. So, as I said here, and to be based on this catechism quote, baptism introduces us into this life of grace, the sacraments, confirmation strengthens it, you know, communion, the time we receive the Lord himself, it causes us to grow in grace, grow in the life of God, grow in the, in, in the, in the life of the Trinity. We, we will come back to that about the sacraments later on. But for now, I'm just outlining it. So the quote in the Catechism goes on to say, God calls us all to this intimate union with him, even if the special graces or extraordinary signs of this mystical life are granted only to some for the sake of manifesting the gratuitous gift given to all. Okay, what does that mean? Let's say it again. God calls us all to this intimate union with him. Even if the special graces or extraordinary signs of this mystical life. So he's talking about things like ecstasies, stigmata, visions like Teresa of Avila having the vision of the Trinity herself. Um, you know, other saints, you know, experiencing manifest signs of the kingdom, um, apparitions, you know, all these things that we read in the lives of the saints, or maybe stuff you've experienced yourself on pilgrimages or, or at home or in your own quiet prayer time. Um, 
these extraordinary signs of the mystical life, but they manifest outwardly to point to a reality that all Christians, if they're in the state of grace, they have. So what do I mean? St. Padre Pio, his wounds, he has this stigmata. It's an invisible sign of, of his, his union with the cross. It's on his body. It's, it's, it overflows from his soul into his body. He has the wounds of Christ imprinted on him, which is a sign of the suffering of the, of the cross. But, but that's an extraordinary manifestation of something that we probably all share. We all participate in the wounds of Christ. Anytime we go through suffering, grief, you know, like things that keep upon us, they're like the stigmata on our soul. They're suffering on our soul. Okay? So, for so, so Padre Pio, it externally manifested, and his was particularly intense, uh, intense union with the cross. But we all share in that, that cross, that passion. But we're not all going to have external manifestations of the kingdom, and it's not always necessary. It's then the life of the church to help us visibly see what is often invisible, right? So the life of grace in us, sometimes we don't feel it, we don't sense it, but we, we're, we're forced with faith to believe it's there. So, so this is what the catechism means by saying that it's manifested because what is manifested for some is really just to show outwardly the gift that has been given to all. And so, and so this is an extraordinary thing. And so the, po the point about all of this is that we're all called to be mystics. Um, mystics is not, you don't have to be overflowing with supernatural phenomena to be a mystic. That's the point. You know, and there was a great move um, in the life of the church leading up to Vatican II by great Dominicans like um, Venerable Juan Anna Intero, a Spanish um, a theologian, a Dominican on spiritual theology, and Garigou Lagrange, a great French Dominican theologian who, did, who, who, who was the guy who did the doctorate, who mastered, well, who guided Pope John Paul on his doctorate. And they both we're very much part of a great movement, seeing in the tradition of the church going back that we need to remind the church that everybody's called to the heights of prayer. Everybody's called to a real deep union with God. But what, what happens is that sometimes we, we can all settle. Um, we all, we're in a battle, right? So we're up against spiritual forces that want to put us to sleep. We're, we're up against the sin in our body, our own fallen nature as well, on top of that. And, and all of these forces internally, so our fallen nature, and externally the, the devil and, and fallen spirit are trying to militate against us to, for, to put us asleep spiritually and to dumb us down in our spirit, right? Um, but we are made for so much more. We are made for an intense life of grace with God. And, and, and that will look very different to each one of us according to our personality, our nature, our life circumstances, you know, and, 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 and most of us may not experience these phenomena um, that these saints experience, but nevertheless, you are still can experience the joy of knowing Christ. The, and the deeper joy there is in discovering the heart of Christ more and more and more and more, and the peace that we grow in as we conform our life more to the gospel, okay? So as we conform, St. Teresa of Avila has this teaching that the more we conform our life to the gospel, the more we perfectly try to follow Christ by looking at his life, by following the teaching of the church, by putting all these things in place, we become free. We become free and we grow in prayer. Okay, so our, our ability to grow in prayer and advance in prayer and the experiences of prayer really depend on how we live our life as well. So we can't just live our life any old way we want and expect to be close to God in prayer. Okay, so really at the heart of the whole Christian life is to grow in love. Um, the growth of love in truth. And, and that growth in love is, a, is an experience of God. So the more we know love by doing love, we will come to know God. And, and when, we, when we go to pray, our heart already so accustomed to loving will be able to enter more deeply into loving contemplation because we're accustomed to love. And, and this is the key, right? There's the most simple understanding of freedom. That freedom is to walk in love. And to, 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 to walk in loving God. But first of all, we have to receive love, right? So that's the, the great letter of St. John. St. John says, it's not so much your love for God, but that God loved you first. Okay, this is the, this is the Christian movement. This is, this is the reality of God. 
This is the movement. This is the logic. If we had to have a logic, this is the Christian logic. It begins in God. God loves us first. And then we can only respond to that amazing love by, by trying to love God. And scripture tells us, how do we love God? By following his commandments. By following the path Christ path out for us. So the word commandments is like a dirty word for some sometimes in our culture because it's like a word that seems to rob us of freedom. It's a word that seems to be like slavery or commandments. It's like our modern minds can't deal with that word, you know? It's like, we don't know what to do with that word. But commandment, we need to rediscover the beauty of the word commandment. Commandment of love. It's God, God has given us these, it's, it's, it's a pathway. So I always think of the commandments as pathways to freedom, you know, the inner freedom. When we live this gospel, something happens. Where so, you know this already by your own experience. And part of the drama of, of the Christian life is like we know what we should do, but we fail, right? We're weak. We're sinful. We fall short. You know, this is what St. Paul says. But there's good news, right? I'm just outlaying this general issue right now. But so, so coming back, to, to this idea of love. Um, so a friend of mine, um, I'm just going to read this and because it really just captures the talk. And, and she sent me um, this quote and she says, you know what gives us inner freedom? Love, perfect divine love that casts out all fear. Fear constricts us from being free. Only perfect love from the Father and the Son through the Holy Spirit will set us free. To abide in this love is our freedom. In the perfect love from and between the Father and the Son, in this loving knowledge, we have been invited to stay. This is eternal life. Freedom that could only be found in Him alone. So really, that's the whole talk, you know. <laughs> It, it's it's let's be simple it's love right and this is the fight right the christian we found ourselves in a battle to stay in that place to stay in this secret place to stay in that that hidden place of, of being loved infinitely by the father infinitely by the father to stay in that place in our hearts and in our mind now god doesn't stop loving us right but what do we do we put up the barriers by sin we 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 construct the the separation and god only wants to break down separation god wants to 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 bring communion the work of god is communion the work of god is unity the work of god is 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 bringing us into himself the devil is the one or the evil force and evil spirits out there they they construct division they want to separate they want to break down they want to scatter the soul and that's what causes slavery, right? That's what causes all sorts of problems. So we'll look at that. But for now, the word diabolos in Greek means to scatter, to break. Diabolical means to scatter, to break. While well, God wants to unite. So he wants to unite our heart and our mind under grace. He wants to, all the passions in us that are good, that, that are neither bad or evil until they engage in an act. Um, they, they, when they are ordered by grace, they bring about freedom in the soul, right? Like self-mastery. So we need to talk about virtue and we're going to talk about virtue and vice, virtue and sin. We're going to, we need to speak about that, about freedom. But for now, we're just sketching this big picture that, that, that really the life of freedom is to be a child of God in grace, to be adopted by the power of the Holy Spirit into God and to know that you are a child, no matter your weakness, your failures. So in this talk, um, I'm going to refer mainly to St. Catherine of Siena because she's a great Dominican saint. And a very free saint, like St. Saint, saint, saint Dominic, her father, St. Dominic, our founder, was referred to as stupefyingly free. There was something about Dominic's spirit, his charism. He was a free spirit because he knew, 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 knew the power of grace. He understood the power of love. And that's why he also wept at sinners, why, why he wept at people destroying their life with sin. You know, like people who were destroying themselves inwardly and getting sunk into the world losing all hope and joy and freedom um and, and and he wept over this many times the brothers would hear him crying in the chapel saint dominic because he was weeping for souls 
he 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 because he he knew how much the father wanted souls to experience the fullness of life and 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 he realized how so many around him didn't even know Christ and also how many knew Christ but it was skewed it was polluted it was they didn't really know Christ they 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 knew all sorts of versions of the gospel but wasn't the gospel and and so you know he was really passionate about preaching this this free life the life of grace and and so St. Catherine of Siena is very much like this, like all the saints of the church. They understand that they're children of God and that their father is God and that he's not just a creator, but he's a father. And they could understand something of his fatherhood by the very fatherhood that God the Father created, that great fatherhood. And, but sometimes our own experience maybe might be that our own father, earthly father, hasn't been as loving, kind, perfect or, or, or to us. And so our idea of fatherhood is skewed, you know? But, but still, we have to use our intellect. You have to search for truth, you know, and really bring this into meditation that sometimes we can see. We can see like a friend's father. We could see, please God, in, in a good priest, that fatherhood. Or, you know, we could see that, that kindness, that gentleness, which will make us think of God's fatherhood, which is more perfect, more kind, more tender than we could ever imagine. And this is the father Jesus revealed, right? And this is what St. Paul says, that the Holy Spirit cries out in our heart, Abba, Father, Daddy, you know, Abba means Daddy, you know, in, in Aramaic, the language of Jesus is Abi, which is, it's just, it's so dear, it's so kind, it's so filial that the God is a Daddy, you know, and but all the sweetness and kindness and gentleness that we see in the heart of Jesus, because Jesus and the Father are one. Jesus says, when you see me, you see the Father. When you see me, you see the Father. And so Jesus is showing us the fatherhood of God. Jesus is revealing. That's Jesus' whole mission is to save us by revealing the Father. Jesus' whole life is to reveal the Father. His whole mission, he says that, my food is to do the will of the Father. You know, and sometimes we could forget about the Father. And I'm going to pose that question to us now, even myself, right along my own journey. It was, it was only when I came across a book when I was a novice years ago in Cork, and it was about a father speaks to his children about this woman, Mother Ravasio, who, who won all the awards in France for huge medical achievements. And she was a nun and she founded 70 convents and hospitals all over Africa. She actually came up, she founded the cure for leprosy. But she received the revelation from God the Father. God the Father spoke to her in Latin, a language she didn't even know. And she dictated this whole message and it's been accepted by the church and approved by the church. And in it was this cry of the Father that, 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 that the church was forgetting his fatherhood. That forgetting that Jesus came to point us to a direction, to our north, our north. Our compass north is the Father, right? So Jesus came to reveal this. And, and so we need to remember that every time we go to Eucharistic Adoration or we go to Mass, we're celebrating that love that the Father poured forth in Christ for all eternity. There was never a moment of creation in the Trinity. It was just was. All that is is love. All that is is love. And that's the hard bedrock of the whole reality of the creation of the universe is love and that's what jesus revealed on the cross especially obviously there's this perfect love this free love right this 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 complete gift saint john says that you know god the father so loves the world that he gave us his only begotten son as a sacrifice to take our sins away so this is a free gift so when we see the cross we should see the father we should see the goodness of the father the kindness of the father the tenderness of the father that this love because jesus atoned for us on the cross through love, through a superabundant love in his heart. That's what St. Thomas Aquinas teaches. So a superabundant love in the heart of Jesus on the cross that made reparation for all the infinite sins that humanity has committed against God. So God made the reparation. God provided the gift. Right? God is the one who saved us. God is the one who repaired it in truth and justice because you know God can't pretend that sin is not real. God is true. So God can't pretend that sin has an infinite offense against him. He's true. He, he can't not fake it. But what he's done is that he's given us all the means to arrive at death with, with sanctification, with life, so that none of this guilt of sin will, will affect us from going near to him at death. Because at death, we will come and we, we will go away from God if we're not in grace. Because we will see that it's so unfitting to go into the, to the heart of the Trinity, watching our sin. In, in the truth of God's very life, that we will be faced with truth of our whole life of death. And, and God has given us 
so many gifts to be prepared for that so that we don't have to be afraid, that we, we long for death, actually. We long to, to be with the Father. You know, we long for heaven, right? Okay, there's a lot there. So I just want to backtrack a little bit. I want to read to you St. Augustine. So, you know, the saints are the interpret interpreters of this great freedom of heart, this, this a heart full of life, a heart that has been touched by grace, a heart that is redeemed. And they, they teach us this interior freedom, right? Which I'm yet to truly go into. So don't worry if you feel a bit lost. It's because I haven't really gone into to, to, to that whole path, but we will. St. Augustine says, Late have I loved you. You know this quote. It's a, many of you know this quote. It's, it, it's very popular, but it's so beautiful. Late have I loved you. Beauty so old and so new. Late have I loved you. And see, you were within. You were in me. And I was in the external world. I was in all that I was seeing with my eyes. And I sought you there. I sought you in the world. And in my unlovely state, so in my sinful state, I plunged into those lovely creative things that you made. And yet you were with me and I was not with you. So God is constant. God's love is there. It's constant. But Augustine, Augustine wasn't with God. God was there, but he wasn't open to God. And that's often our situations too. The lovely things. So he's recognizing the goodness of creative things. They, they're lovely. But they become disfigured when they're not loved after God or when they're not loved because of God or for God. The lovely things kept me far from you, though if they did not have their existence in you, they had no existence at all. You called and cried out loud and shattered my deafness. So he's speaking about this moment when Augustine has this conversion um, where he hears the word of God. He hears God and he, he, this deafness, this deafness brought on his mind and heart from sin from turning away from God, from living a very wild life, had really darkened his spirit to the point that he was just spiritually deaf and dumb. But God broke through that. His grace broke through that. And he says, you were radiant and resplendent. You put to flight my blindness. So is this, this gift, this gift of faith now being born in Augustine's heart that he starts to see spiritually, starts to see. He can't see with his eyes. But he starts to see with his heart, he starts to know that there is a God, that he knows. And that's what faith is, right? Faith is the assurance that God is there. Sometimes our faith wavers or it, it faces doubts. And, and that's the, the path, that how it grows. You know, we, we're forced with trials of faith. But, but, but faith ultimately is believing there is a God. And if we believe there is a God, we can start to enjoy God. Because we know that this God is not just some cold, distant God. This God loves us. That this God... Is full of love and tenderness for us. And if we can enjoy that in prayer, which is what contemplative prayer is, is just simply making an act of faith, knowing there is a God who loves me. And I could just sit, trying to create that quiet time to, to just sit and be loved, right? To sit and be loved. And this is Augustine. He's starting to learn this. This love is breaking into his life, right? This love is breaking into his life. You called and cried out loud and shattered my deafness. You were radiant and resplendent. You put to flight my blindness. You were fragrant and I drew in my breath and now pant after you. I tasted you and I feel but hunger and thirst for you. You touched me and I'm set on fire to attain the peace which is yours. So you hear those words. This is the touch of faith, right? God didn't physically touch him. Well, yes, in the sacraments, but this is before. He touched him in his soul through faith because he made contact with God through faith. I tasted you. So this is the gift of wisdom, the Holy Spirit, the gift of wisdom poured out and baptism that we have to really invoke and ask God for is the gift that St. Thomas says allows us to taste God spiritually, to taste him through faith, right? And what do I mean by taste him? Well, just close your eyes and, 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 and make that act of faith that God sees you. And But if you believe that, that creates some kind of experience in your soul by the knowledge that, of faith, right? You, you, it's it's the, what he means by this taste. And I feel but hunger and thirst for you. You touch me and I'm set on fire to attain the peace which is yours. Now, our dear friend St. Catherine of Siena, who is really on fire all the time, um, <laughs> she suffered a lot to be on fire. She suffered a lot to experience God in such a profound way. But she says something that is beautiful. Um, and, and look, 
she says that the supreme eternal word and the exalted trinity gave me such joy that even the parts of my body felt as if they were melting, disintegrating like wax in the fire. So this is what I mean. Now, there's, there's value in reading these things of the saints. Sometimes they make us feel lonely because they feel like we don't go experience these things, right? Or, or, or maybe we do. Um, but the point is, by, by they, they open up our imagination to what is possible with God in prayer. Um, they, they open up our hearts hunger for what God can do in our hearts if we really rest relentlessly commit to him and you know she's she's speaking about like melting like wax in a fire she's speaking about this consuming love that she she gets after her life she she gets to experience this incredible love of God for her um and you know this might not have started in St Catherine's heart because of her feelings or her emotions we're not speaking about feelings and emotion they're important but she, we're talking about a real faith, a faith that just knows that it is God. And, and she comes to know God's goodness through faith, just a naked faith and act just believing, and which, of course, is grace, right? Which is, God is wants to pour this kind of faith into us, but we have to open our hearts to receive it. And that faith, when it becomes so convinced over a life of prayer and sacramental life, um, you know, comes to this point where, we're convinced of God and this conviction of God, this knowing God's goodness, knowing that he, the trials he sends us are all for our good and all this kind of stuff, which we'll go into a little bit more, um, starts to convince us of his goodness. And so, so that's just some words of St. Catherine. And, you know, one of the brothers was telling me about, they went on a trip to Medjugorje and they were making this pilgrimage and they were going up to Vishka's house for, for, an, for one of the apparitions of Our Lady. And they got into this cab and the, the driver in this cab was really angry and bitter and just poisonous like it was just like it was really enraged it was really going through a really tough time and you, the atmosphere in the cab was really bad and he just anyway so they were driving along and there were these little boys on the side of the road and one of the boys waved him and called out his name papa and and it, they said it was like his whole face his whole body changed it was like he just changed and then he turned back and said that's my son and what it was is that, you know, it was like, it's just the power of love, power of love to change one, to free someone from, from bitterness and anger and resentment, the power of love to free. Okay. So the power of love for freedom and, and this, this act of love by his son transfigured him. So here's the thing, right? How much more so for God and us, Right. God loves us, but he showed us a, his love through his little son, his son on the cross and his life. That, that love, that, that tender love of a son who cries out to his father, uh, uh, you know, throughout his life and shows us this, this tender father. And it's that conviction of God's love is what is going to make us saints. It's that conviction is that what's going to help us overcome sinfulness. It's not, it's first beginning at looking at God and knowing his love and then looking at the reality of sin, holding the two together, okay, holding on God's infinite goodness and, and knowing our weakness, that we can fall away from this love. We can fall away eternally from this love if we are not on the right path. And it won't take away an ounce of God's love because, in fact, the more love does is the more our guilt will be when we see his beauty, um, if we weren't reconciled to him and, and, and found um you know purification of our conscience before we die which through we do through through the cross and so we'll look at that when we speak about sacraments but for now i want to so i've been kind of speaking very loosely all these saints and 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 the power of love and okay so the christian tradition sees the freedom as as being a child of god okay being receiving the holy spirit receiving the 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 grace of god and to be saved, that's freedom, okay, to be saved, to, to, be, to be saved from sin, to be saved from, 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 from the wiles of the world. But it doesn't mean that we'll be saved from all suffering in this life, right? So sometimes we think freedom is to not suffer at all. Or we think that freedom is to, to have all the material things and to choose whatever we want and, you know, have to prosper on earth. 
And these things can be good, obviously, but it's not what gives us freedom, right? Because, you know, you can have millions of dollars in the bank and whatever and not be free, right? Because, well, you could be enchained to those material things, but you could maybe have sinned in possessing those things. You could do all sorts of things. But the point is interior freedom is a, is a very different thing. Interior freedom in the Christian tradition is, is, is salvation, is, 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 is choosing what God would choose. That's freedom. Cho choosing the good. In, in our actions every day, choosing not to sin. And that's what it is, right? So what is sin? Sin basically is, is those actions or those choices that we make that just pull us away from light, from, from God, from, 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 from his goodness. Because the moral tradition of the church teaches us that what we do, how we act, influences who we are. So I always give the example of a, like a thief, right? If I'm a child and I start stealing little things in the shop and over a while, it gets easy to steal, and then I get old. I start stealing big things, and my my conscience starts to become dead. And I don't, you know, I I, I I'm I, I can swindle money out of people, blah blah blah. And I, you know, I'm becoming lax in this, and I become a thief, right? I now have this habit ingrained in me, which is called vice or sin, which which make I have a tendency now. So what how we act shapes tendencies in our soul, right? Sh shapes inclinations, because that's who we are as human beings. Of inclinations to do all sorts of things. And, and, and how we act reinforces those inclinations. So if I act in evil, I confirm my evil habit. But if I act in good, which is what the tradition of the church would call virtue, if I choose the virtue, which is really how Christ lived, Christ was perfectly virtuous, right? And, and all the commandments of God point towards virtue, help us to live this path of virtue. And virtue, even the Greeks, right, the Greek philosophers before Christian revelation, this, they called this virtue, right, so they had the word virtue, and they would say that happiness is found by living a virtuous life, so they recognize that, they recognize that if I go to eat a big banoffee pie for all you people in Ireland, or I don't know, uh, a black cake at Christmas time in Trinidad, if I eat a whole cake, I'm going to end up sad and slothful and like, ugh, like feeling, you know, like that, that was simple, it, it's, I wasn't temperate, I wasn't um, moderate in my actions I became excessive I ate this thing and, that, and that's sin and what does it make me feel it makes me drained tired it, it actually affects my spirit it makes me heavy but if I was to eat just the amount and I controlled with, with virtue I controlled with, with the you know with the virtue of temperance which is to the ability in us to not do excessive things and you know I ate just the one slice I probably left there feeling free right I, I left there with, 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 with a right contentment, right? So that's just an example of how virtue and vice play out in a very concrete example, but it's, it, it's across our whole life, right? It's across our whole life. The whole virtue of purity, you know, like the spiritual laws that when we break, it, trans, it breaks, it causes darkness to come upon the soul, right? You know, like the whole sanctity of marriage and, and the sanctity of love in marriage, like God created the, the sexual love for marriage. And, and when, when we go against that, it, it doesn't create like a darkness on the spirit, which is called impurity. And it, it, it makes our minds dull and it, and it and affects our prayer. I mean, it distances us from God. So all sin has an effect on our prayer life, which is what I said earlier on. The more we try to live like Christ, the more pure in our heart we become, the more experience in prayer will become divine will become transformed into Christ more and more, and we'll experience things that we couldn't possibly imagine in prayer, okay? So, <coughs> so this, is, this is like the Christian tradition of virtue and sin, okay? So the teachings of the church don't just come out of thin air, right? They, they come from the gospel. They're not man-made. They come from the mouth of Christ. Christ teaches us all these things, not to make us slaves, but to free us, because he knows when we follow what he says, we're going to become free. Jesus says in John 10, I have come not like the thief to kill and destroy the devil or sin. I've come to bring life, to bring abundance of life. And this is what we see in the saints. They're fully alive. And I, I don't even mean the canonized saints, the saints in the pew, the saints in the church, the, in your local church, in yourself. Please, please God, you, you know, that, that, that you know the fullness of life. Now, suffering, 
as we said, I touched on this earlier on, this is very important because one of the obstacles we think to freedom is suffering. Now, suffering is going to come our way. It's unavoidable. We know this. It comes through all sorts of things. It comes through sicknesses. It comes through, through people afflicting us. It comes through, it comes through all sorts. There's innocent suffering. And then there's also the suffering that we incur in ourselves through sin. Like, like I said, like eating a big banoffee pie and feeling, you know, terrible acid reflux which burns your esophagus and you're suffering. <laughs> I know what that's like, okay? Um, and, and that's my sin. And, and, and you know, it, it affects everything. That's just, as I go back to that example. But, but the point is that kind of suffering is different. I'm talking about the, the innocent suffering that comes from, from life. Um, how do the saints treat suffering? What did Christ say? This is a huge stumbling block to freedom. And yet it is the very thing that propels us into freedom. <laughs> okay, and this, this is the paradox of the Christian life. The cross is a paradox. All other religions are trying to get rid of the cross. Okay, but Jesus embraced it, embraced suffering, which is an evil in itself, because it was not part of God's plan. It's a result of sin in the world and the fall of the world, fall of cosmic fall. But suffering, when embraced with Jesus on the cross, becomes a source of life. Right? The saints climbed to the heights of prayer, to the heights of, 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 of union with God by suffering. Now, we'll, we have to be careful, right? Like, we, you know, we can pray to be healed. We can pray with full glory in God's hope that God can deliver me from everything. And we are to do that, you know? But in the meantime, we accept the suffering as a means of growing closer to Him. Because in suffering, Jesus is not as, He's closest to us in suffering. And we don't go searching for it, okay? But, but it's going to come our way. And on true freedom then, if you could be free, is by accepting it and saying, God, I give this to you. And, and what did God do with suffering? He said, this has now become a spiritual force in the universe, okay, on the cross. It's become a spiritual force. My suffering, my innocent suffering given to Christ will save souls, will cure other people. It's a potent force, okay? Like we cannot talk enough about how powerful suffering is okay and 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 we've forgotten about this in the church at the moment i think you know but the saints are all speaking about it, right they they long to suffer in the sense that lord give me the suffering so that i can grow closer to you now but but they don't get down and depressed in it okay like they're not they're not bird they don't get crushed by the suffering they were freed by it now this is a mystery only the Holy Spirit could bring such freedom to such a soul. What often happens in our lives is that why we don't feel the freedom of suffering is because we're constantly resisting it or trying to avoid it or fight it off. But the moment we embrace it with love, so love is what transforms suffering, okay? Love is what transforms suffering. When I can accept the sufferings in my life that, that I now, as I said, we do everything to get rid of it, but if it's just there and it's something that is just, God doesn't seem to let up, we accept it. And we say, Lord, I give this to you out of love for souls. Then we find a new freedom. Okay, we find a new freedom. And so this is this, this, this is the hard teaching of the saints. This is, a, this is the hardest part of the gospel. Okay, which is why there's so many false gospels out there that try to create prosperity, prosperity, prosperity without the cross. Okay, it's not Christianity. It's it's not it's not Christ. You just read Christ. Come follow me. Pick up your cross. Follow me. But God doesn't. It's not the way, like, come follow me and be depressed and overburdened with anxiety and all this stuff. Those are things that come from our fallen nature and from the devil, who tries to, to take away spiritual joy, take away the peace of our heart, right? This suffering, St. Therese of Lisieux says, exists with joy and peace. It's a mystery. How could I be so joyful and yet I'm suffering? How could I be so full of peace and yet I'm suffering? You know, and this is something we have to ask God for. If you are dealing with a major illness or something in your life, Okay, some some maybe it could just be a situation of work or a family at home. Try to embrace it, try to love it, and you will see it will change, it will lose its power over you. It's like going into a fight, right? You're boxing with someone. If you keep boxing the person, they're gonna hit you back. <laughs> so if you box suffering and you're gonna fight it in, in the wrong sense, you don't accept the cross and you pray with all your heart, with trust and confidence that God can heal you, he can do all that he wants, but you've accepted it like he accepted his cross then then you will find peace you will really find peace and you will find freedom because as i said one of the greatest things that constricts us is suffering okay we and we, we face it in all sorts of ways 
the suffering of our own personal sin, our struggle to become holy. Every day we struggle, we make bad choices that makes us suffer. But when we repent and we can give that suffering back to God, he can do amazing things with it. So, so when we talk about interior freedom, we're talking about all these things. We're talking about virtue. So doing what is the right thing. So like Christian virtues are all over the New Testament, like perseverance and doing the good, you know, patience, kindness, gentleness, you know. But the highest virtues are faith, hope, and love. I suppose I should say what a virtue is. A virtue basically is like a moral excellence. You know, some kind of character trait that we do that, that is good and that, that is, re, is, is not easily shaken from us. So the more virtue gets established in us, it means that I'm less likely to overeat. I'm less likely to, to procrastinate. I'm less likely to, to get angry, et cetera, whatever. Then there's a stability coming and therefore you're less likely to lose your peace and you're less likely to lose your connection with the spirit and connection with God and sense God's presence, right? Because when we're thrown by sin, we lose a sense of God. Um, but God is still there. But we, it takes a while for us to settle again, to receive back his presence, to enter back his love, etc. cetera. So, so th- th- there's so much hair going on. I feel like I'm, I'm talking a long time now. Um, are you guys okay? <laughs> Sleeping yet? <laughs> um, and I guess the last thing, one of the last things, like this is by no means comprehensive or extensive talk on Christian freedom, but um, I know it's a lot and you probably need to go over it again and again. Um, fair, okay? Like one of the big things that obviously crush freedom is fair, right? We all suffer fear. Like fear is the cause of anxiety, right? If we're riddled with anxiety, it's coming from fear. It's coming from our lack of trust and confidence in God. It's coming from the devil, it's coming from our fallen nature, okay? So there are all these different outlets that anxiety come at us at. And we all struggle with anxiety in this world in different ways. And there's good anxiety, the healthy anxiety of a mother who, who, who languishes over, you know, the suffering of her children, et cetera, et cetera, or a brother, whatever. Um, but at, at some time, we have to make sure that anxiety doesn't take our peace. If it takes our peace, then it's not from God, okay? It's... Um, so, you know, they, Mary had anxiety when she was separated from Christ, but she didn't lose her peace. She didn't lose her confidence and trust in God, um, but she felt the separation, okay? So, you know, so fear, okay, fear. And this is a big thing, fear of all sorts of things. But ultimately, sometimes we have this distorted fear of God, right? We have this skewed image of God that really affects our freedom. We, and this, this is what sin does, right? The catechism says sin creates a distrust in us of God. Because we do, we, we sin and then we feel like, how could God love me? Okay, basically, that's kind of the logic. And every time we sin, it, it scratches that wound somehow, right? That's why the more we try to live a holy life, then the more we will move away from fear because when we have less to fear in that sense and we could really receive God's perfect love. But but what happens in the meantime? What happens if, if I, am, I am sinning and I'm trying my best? Well, this is why, you know, the saints tell us, like St. Catherine, St. Faustina, you know, to really pray for the grace of trust and confidence. And this is where knowledge is important, right? This is why we do talks like this. Um, knowledge is really key to knowing God will deliver us from a lot of fear and bring a lot of freedom when we know who God truly is and, and when we sin and we really repent and we won't let our wounds make us afraid of God because we, we shouldn't be afraid of our father. He is so good and tender that he wants us to be with him in eternity and he will, he's so powerful to bring us to eternity. So that's what Christian hope is, right? Like we hope in his goodness, we hope in his power. We hope that he is all powerful to bring me to salvation. So this idea of fear is scratched. So let's just turn to St. Catherine for one or two minutes um, about, about this. You know, she, she's really, um, really wonderful. And she's writing to this young man. She, you know, St. Catherine would, 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 um, would, would counsel prisoners on death row who did horrible things. She would go and, and they'd be, become repentant. And she saw them plagued by their guilt. And she would have to try and convince them of God's goodness, that God forgave them that God is merciful to them, no matter what they've done, because they're sorry and they turn to God, that God is ready to forgive. 
And, and even one of her spiritual sons, she was there and he was so terrified, she told him she would be there to catch his head in her hands. And she stood there as they decapitated him and she caught his head in her hands. And, 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 and you know, like, it was this incredible love of St. Catherine to journey with these horrible sinners, but who became free, who became sons in prison, who became, you know, who, who, who really discovered the Father's love. And so she says, she's writing to someone who's struggling with sin, and she says, if there is son, you say to me, I'm weak in the face of so many enemies. I answer you that of ourselves, we are all so weak and frail that we fall at the slightest obstacle. But divine providence is at work within our souls, strengthening us and relieve, relieving us of all weakness. So be trustful, firmly believing that God always provides for souls who trust in him. Do we hear that? This is King Catherine, right? Doctor of the church. Be trustful, firmly believing that God always provides for souls who trust in him. Then the devil is powerless because the power of the most gracious Holy Cross deprives him of all his power over us. But that same cross, by God's boundless goodness, makes us wholly strong, freed from all weakness and instability. And then she goes on and she says that our helper is God and he is such that no one could withstand him. As long as we continue to look to this strong, loving helper, we cannot be weakened by the thought of our own frailty. So, you know, St. Catherine had this amazing kind of teaching uh, that, you know, what builds up this freedom in us is our conviction of God's infinite goodness, tenderness, kindness. He's more willing to be, forgive us than we are able to sin. And, and, and she says, we look at that goodness and conviction, but we're also aware of our sinfulness, self-knowledge, she calls it, that we're aware that we're sinners, we're weak. But what matters is the goodwill, that, that yes, I'm falling, but I'm not intentionally trying to fall. But even when sometimes it is intentional, we turn back to God and we make a firm hope. And the saints tell us that that firm hope in God, that loving God actually could bring us higher in the spiritual life. And it's how God turns our weaknesses into strength, okay? It's a mystery. It's how he turns out all our sinfulness when they're repented for, he, he uses them to bring us closer to himself. And this is the kind of father we have. This is a true father, the true goodness of God. You know, and in another, in another letter she writes, like we have all of St. Catherine's letters. It's incredible. There's a huge amount. And she says, isn't God more ready to forgive than we are to sin? And isn't he our doctor and we the sick ones? Isn't he the bearer of the, our iniquities? And doesn't he consider spiritual discouragement worse than any other sin? That's very strong language. She's saying that distrust, like what Faustina said, what the Lord said to Faustina, distrust in his goodness wounds him more than any other sin. She says, yes, indeed. So, dearest son, open your mind's eye with its light, most holy faith, and see how much God loves you. Don't become discouraged. As you consider his love and your heart's coldness, but let the fire of his holy desire grow in true knowledge and humility. So, you know, again, these are just the advice of St. Catherine. I'm going to end shortly that, 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 you know, we will, as much as we try to live this path of virtue, we might fall, we might sin, we turn back to God and how we go to the sacraments, we go to confession, we repent. And the sacrament of confession is so freeing. We know this. Because sin isolates us, makes us feel alone. And when we go to confess to someone, we're already breaking that power that we're not alone. That, and the humility of confessing is, really does a great good for the soul. Humility is a force in the soul that frees the soul from so much. It's a spiritual force, humility. And it lightens the spirit to, to fly towards God. And so, so the question is, how do we grow in freedom? Well, we, we grow with the sacraments we frequent the sacraments to receive grace we don't just approach the sacraments willy-nilly but we are we, we try to recollect properly for the sacraments for mass for confession so that our hearts really are open to receive the touch of god to really receive his grace and pray right pray is so important right this is where we grow in the conviction that god is a good father by just simply spending time with him how can i know about any of you if i didn't spend time with you People could tell me all they want about you, but I only know about you from hearsay. I need to spend time with you. I need to experience you personally. And that's the same thing with Christ, right? And that's what we do. And so this is where I'm always on about contemplative prayer, because contemplative prayer is a source of tremendous freedom. 
Because contemplative prayer nourishes our faith, our hope and our love. And faith, hope and love, as St. Paul says, is really the heart of freedom. Faith tells me God is good and that God is real. Hope tells me that I have a firm desire to go to heaven and that God will bring me to heaven if I'm repentant and that I just have general goodwill. And love is, is the Holy Spirit poured into my heart that will empower me to, to keep going in this life. So, you know, so faith, hope, and love, they nourish in prayer and the sacraments. So when we, we find quiet time for God, we're going to grow in a conviction that he's good, that he is there. See, when we know God is there and that he's good and that the suffering in my life is part of his wise plan, then I have nothing to fear, you know? And, and Catherine will say, no more fear. That's, she literally shouts out, no more fear. No more fear. God is God. He's real. The Lord is real. But I could say this, but unless we spend time in prayer, that will not become real to us. Right? So praying the rosary is very powerful. Absolutely. I'm a Dominican. You know, how lady gave the rosary to St. Dominic. So powerful. But unless the rosary becomes a contemplative prayer for you, sometimes it, it you know, it, it can just become a chore or duty. And that kills prayer, right? If you're doing something just not because of love, you're doing it because it's like a duty, then, then we're starting on the wrong foot. So we need to re 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 recollect ourselves and see why am I praying? Am I just ticking a box or am I really going to meet a person? Am I going to be loved? I, I'll end on this. I keep saying this, but I'll end on this example. My last prior, Father John Harris, said that once he was on a retreat, giving a retreat to nuns, and this nun came to him and said, she was telling her about Thanksgiving when she received the Eucharistic Lord. And she says, all I do is I sit there and when I receive him, I let him love me. I let him love me. And really, you know, that's the Christian life. Let yourself be loved, filled up with God by his love, by meditating on it. Sometimes if it's hard, if your heart is hard like mine, and you need to let that drop from hair to hair, you just have to chew it over again and again. Say, tell yourself again and again, God loves me. God loves me. God is a father. Because sin has so like broken the mind. We need to be meditate for long periods of time. And that's when the heart catches on fire. Okay. So contemplation, frequently meditation, sacraments, we grow in freedom. Because we grow in goodness, conviction of God, that he loves me, that he's all powerful. I have nothing to fear. I will waver at times, yes, lack trust at times, but I, I want to have a fundamental disposition, then I'm free, okay? Free, because we are loved by God, we're children of God. Amen. And Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. So it's longer than I thought. <laughs> this, so this, yeah, so this is recorded. It will be in Dominican House of Prayer on YouTube. I'll also post it into the Heart Reach group as well which will be a link for Dominican House of Prayer. So Dominican House of Prayer is, is myself, Father Ignatius, and, and, and a wonderful lay Dominican couple, Ina and Dr., her husband, Dr. Carr, down in Florida. And through our trip to Medjugorje in the summer, we felt, um, you know, this is something necessary. God was putting this into our hearts a while back, and it's kind of come together as just a, as an initiative to promote like these teachings in the church about prayer, about the mystical tradition, you know, different, many different things. And I'm very Dominican, I'm trying to preach the truth. Um, and and to, to, just, to, to, to just bring the infinite riches of the church to, to your good selves who are in the pew, who God wants to bring all of us closer to him. So, um, and so heart reaches, you know, from the WhatsApp group that I started, and I'm just joining it to Dominican House of Prayer now as one of the little ministries of Dominican House of Prayer. So, so great. If, I, if some of you would like to stay on for the rosary, um, I'm, I'm just going to, if some of you don't want to stay on for the rosary, that's fine. So I'll give you time to maybe leave or if you want to stay, I'm just going to see, maybe ask one or two people to help us um, with, um, with the rosary. Um, great. Okay. Um, see you, Father. Okay, Keith. God bless. You. Have to go. God time. bless. Good to see God you. Bless. Thank you. Take care. Take care. Yeah. Thanks okay. very much, Father Jesse. I've got to go as well. Okay. God bless. See God you. Bless. Bye, no, guys. No worries. See you, D. Okay. I'm just gonna scan <laughs> for some names. Okay. So, Alex, Ina, would you do?
you know, what do you do with the first decade? Are you able to stay on? Okay, and then um, Niala, what do you do the second decade? Okay, I'll do the third decade. Kevin, are you gonna be on from the Kevin Kelly app? Would you mind doing leading us in the fourth decade? Is that okay? Okay. And great stuff. Um, just I'm moving along here. Get an, get another another guy here. <laughs> um, great. So oh so sorry, no, we, we still have one more decade, don't we? Yeah. Um Therese, are you are you are you gonna be on for the fifth decade? Can you lead us fifth decade? Great. Okay. So blessed mother, we we've spoken about so many things here. We just ask you very simply to help us discover our freedom as children of God, that we are loved by our Father, and that love has been revealed on the cross and in the whole life of Jesus. And that we pray for the strength to become saints. And to desire sanctity, to desire the deep, deep following of Jesus. That we desire to give up all the things that lead us away from you. So that we could come to experience God's love in a great way. Okay. So I always say that the, the creed is so powerful. The creed is... Um, really an exorcist told me that the creed over evil is so powerful. When we proclaim the creed with truth and with faith, um, it's an explosion of truth that the devil hates. And so we could pray it over different situations in our life. We could pray it aloud in our house to mark our house under the sign of the holy faith, the creed. Um, and uh, I've heard so many stories of people come back to me on this about how powerful it changed their life. If you're struggling with doubts about your faith, you feel like the devil is really attacking faith. That, that's also an invitation by God that he's going to make you grow in faith because we grow by opposition. Um, then just pray the creed and it, 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 will descend, it will just block those spiritual attacks. So, so we begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on a bunch of spies, was crucified, died, and was born. He descended among the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father, the Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now pray for the Holy Church, for the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and we pray for the virtues of faith, hope, and love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. So the first glorious mystery, the resurrection. We just contemplate this beautiful scene of the Lord rising, of his glory, of his mortal body being transfigured, transformed, power of grace. And that's this new creation, the risen Jesus, the same Jesus who, who knows us, 
who sees us, who is alive in our life. And so we ask on this Sunday that we will find time for rest, to contemplate our faith, to find quiet time just to remind ourselves of this power of grace in our life. Dina. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses yes. as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead yes. all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Mm -hmm. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. The second glorious mystery, the ascension of our Lord into heaven. And at this point, the gospel says something really interesting that after Jesus ascended, the disciples went away with great joy. And it's, it's such a striking image, the joy, because they saw Jesus going up to heaven to another proof of his divinity. What man could just rise and disappear before their eyes? And yet they saw this, they witnessed this. They wrote about it. They painted it in their early art. This was an event that happened. And Jesus had said to them, be happy for me because I go to my father. And true friendship rejoices in the joy of the friend. And so they were happy for Jesus. They were happy for him to, to ascend into the fathers, to be seated at the right hand of the father. And so we pray for, for the joy maybe of our beloved lost ones who've gone before us. We ask the Lord for something of the joy that, that our Christian hope tells us or hopes for reasonably that they are with the Lord. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was As in the beginning. No. Now and ever shall be now world be without end. Amen. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us, preserve us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven and help especially those most in need of thy mercy. Ave, ave. Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. The third glorious mystery, the descent of the Holy Spirit of the Apostles at Pentecost. In this beautiful mystery of these apostles gathered with Mary, we know that the scriptures tell us that the, the disciples were locked with fear. Fear. They were locked because of fear of the Jews and what the Jews would do to them based on what happened to Christ. And yet something changed. The Spirit came and gave them strength, gave them power, gave them courage, gave them love, gave them the virtues, gave them freedom. And so we pray for an outpouring of this gift of freedom in our life in the face of all our monsters, in the face of all our fears. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. The fourth glorious mystery, the Assumption of our Blessed Mother into Heaven. We know that this, this desire in her heart to become perfectly one with her Son, to be one with the Father and the Holy Spirit, that she was given the singular privilege of her body being assumed and made glorious by Christ. And so shows us the great hope for us. If, if that could happen for Mary, then it could happen for all of us. And so we this great truth that Mary's glorious body in heaven, which the visionaries see when she comes to them, like in Fatima and Medjugorje and Ludes, reminder that our faith is not fiction, it is real. Kevin. Sorry, uh, Kevin, are you there? Is, oh. Yeah, you have me now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Our, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory, Hail, be, to the, to glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, oh my. save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Ave, ave. Ave Maria, Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. The fifth glorious mystery, the most beautiful mystery of Mary, crowned queen in heaven and earth. And of course, the queenship of Mary is not like anything earthly that we could even resemble her queenship has to do with yes power we could speak about the same words that we might refer to an earthly queen like power and influence her power is that of grace not natural authority she has a power of given to her by god to dispense his graces she's at the heart of salvation with her son and that she has this influence over our lives a real influence a causal influence so we, we celebrate and we honor her queenship as being the mother, the instrument the, by which God will enter this world and become human like us. And so we ask, Mary, that you will, that our lives will be subject to your influence and to your queenship, that you'll be queen of our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Amen. Our Father, who art hail in heaven. Mary. Ha oh, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us <laughs> sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it, it was, was in the beginning, in the... is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, for banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thy eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O Clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal salvation. Grant, we beseech thee, by meditating upon these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the divine assistance remain always with us. And may the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us this day in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God restrain him, we humbly pray. For thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust down into us Satan and all his evil spirits who wander through this world, seeking the ruination of souls. Amen. St. Catherine of Siena, pray for us. St. Augustine, pray for us. For all you many saints and angels of God, pray for us. I actually have this beautiful image here of Dominican saints around the cross of Christ. So all the, well, just some of them, <laughs> there's a lot of them, but St. Catherine is, is right there. Ne she, that's her there. She's kind of reaching out to Christ. Um, yeah. I have a little, a little thing here of St. Catherine on my desk as well, kind of in ecstasy and prayer to remind me to strive my, with all my heart to reach God. Um, so, and that's Our Lady of Knock, as many in, in Ireland, or I'm sure many of you know of Our Lady of Knock. So, Teresa, sorry to pick on you again. Would, do you feel comfortable to sing a song for us of your choice? Um, yeah, I'm just thinking. Um, well, thank you so much. It's so um, beautiful have, to have this opportunity to uh, be together and to grow in humility. Um, let's see. Hmm. What do you think, Father? <laughs> yeah, I kind of put you on the spot there. Okay, um, let's see. Um, here, I'm trying to find you again. How about since we just prayed the rosary? Um, let's see. How about Ave Maria? Just simply. Yeah, um, sure. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, I'll stand up. Uh, just for us to pray with you. Hey. 
Deckung. Benedicta tu, en moliere, et benedictus, et benedictus, ventris, yeah. Ave Maria. Um, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be Amen. made worthy of the promises of Christ. Amen. For forth we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the message of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through our same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Father. Praise God. No, thank you. Some people were on the pilgrimage. I still on that we're on the pilgrimage to Medjugorje and remember you fondly singing for us at the Mass at the Masses. So praise God. There's Helen agreeing with us. So. Yeah, thank you very much. Praise Sorry, God. I'm not disturbed by you. I have just some workmen with me here. So yeah, uh, Vincent, great lovely. to see you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, see bless you. you. Bless thank you. you. All right, everyone. Well, there's it. We've come to an end. Um, I'm actually going to go out for a walk and make a little pilgrimage to St. Catherine's Church. So I'll pray for you that there's going to be finishing adoration there for the day. And hopefully I'll be there for benediction. So I'll pray for you. Bring you all to St. Catherine. Thank you. Father Jesse. Yes. Can you hear me? Oh, Auntie Jella. Hi, Father. Thank you so much for that beautiful teaching. You're welcome. You really touched me, and I'm begging you, good people, to please say a little prayer for Chelsea's baby. He's had an unexplainable fever now for the last two oh, weeks, gosh. and she doesn't really know. She's a pediatrician herself, but she's quite worried about him, although they yeah. tell her it'll go, it'll go. So just offer a little prayer for her and keep her in your thoughts and prayers. Absolutely. Trust. Trust. It'll be all right. Absolutely. Yes, thank so we'll you. Make that faith, yeah. Lots absolutely. of love from Trinidad to you all. God bless. Thank God, you so much. God bless you, Auntie Jilla. Bye bye. Thanks, Father Jesse, Kathleen. Thank you. Thank you. Who's let me see? Thank you, Father. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Bye, everyone. Bye, bye, Father Jesse. God bless. Thank you, Father. God bless. Bye. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm waiting. I'm, I'm waiting so have for your blessing. Father Jesse. Father. Oh, yeah. Okay. I just extend a blessing to everyone. May the Lord bless each and every one of you and keep you and guard you. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Jesse. Father. Thanks, Bye. Vincent. Thanks, Teresa. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Father Jesse. Thanks, Kevin. Bye, Thanks, Teresa. Thank you very rosary. much. God bless. Mary, God bless you. God bless. God bless. Well, there's, there's the whole Kelly gang. God bless. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Bye. Mom, Dad. Take care. Hey, I'm good. Yes. God. God bless. Okay. God bless. I'm going to end this now, everyone. I'll see you guys. Bye. Bye bye. bye. Thanks, Niala. Thanks, Sina, Thank so much for your help. You. Thank you. See you. Bye. God bless. Auntie Les. Hi, Granny. <laughs> Granny. It was Thanks, yes, That was amazing, Jess. Please pray for Natalie and Stuart and my whole family. That was yes. amazing. Hi, Jen. Yes, I am. We will. And we'll I'll ask everybody just to pray for everybody's intentions who came on tonight as well. For sure. 100%. It's great to see you, Jen. Thank I think you. I saw Natalie there as well. I only just saw Natalie's face. Natalie was on as well. She fell asleep. She woke up late, so she only got on very, very late. Oh, that's all right. Well, we saw her anyway. Praise she said God. she didn't sleep well, so she woke up late, but she was yeah. gonna, she's going to listen to the recording anyway. Good. I'll put it into the group, yeah. Great. Pray for her, darling. I will. Okay, my love. God bless you. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Bye.